Hello folks, Jason Christman here, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. And starting today, I'm going to start my series called Rate My Winter Hive Setup. This will be the first episode. Um, at the end of this video, I'll explain how you can submit your own photo and description, and you could be included in this series, which I plan to release one video a month of until winter's over. And today, we're going to rate three different people's colonies. And I will not be giving out names. It's up to the individual to leave their name in the comments below and say, hey, the first or the second or the third one, that was my setup. If uh, you feel inclined to do so, go at it. Oh, and please remember, in the real beekeeping world, my rating system means nothing. Mother Nature, well, she's in control, so don't think that my rating system guarantees anything. This is all for fun. Maybe to help you make a local connection with somebody in your region that can give you some pointers and we can all learn from each other's setup, right? That's what this is all about. Okay, so since I'm in Ohio, the very first one I chose to kick off this series is also from Ohio and they are from Powell, Ohio, zone 6A. Estimated winter temps, 15 degrees Fahrenheit to the mid 30s. Estimated winter stores, 80 plus pounds. Okay, for the description, from the bottom to the top. He's got Beetle Buster bottom boards, which are vented, so he may stick in a piece of uh, foam insulation, probably just to help with the draft. Personally, I'd leave the draft. Uh, single deep, single medium, with Saracel top feeders. Um, he has a note here that they have sugar syrup in them, that he'll leave until gone, then remove bee guards and put dry sugar for food and insulation. Um, I should back up and make a note that when I started to take some of these entries, it was, this one here is November 1st. So we still had warm weather. Um, I can see why he was letting them finish up that SERP. Um, he's got better bee insulated outer covers with an R5 value. That's pretty good. Um, We'll wrap with tar paper in a couple weeks, which I imagine is done by now. Um, also, we'll replace entrance reducer with small mouse-proof opening, which he means mouse, mouse guards. Um, high stand tilted forward, about 5 degrees. That's good. No need to tilt the top backwards because Beetle Buster bottom boards do not stick out past the cover. So what he's saying there is Beetle Buster bottom boards are the same dimensions as hive bodies so i know you've see, probably seen some um bottom boards that have the little porch that sticks out a couple inches in front of the colony for the bees to land on and walk in you don't have that with the beetle buster so if moisture was to drip from the top cover down it's going to totally miss the bottom board and not have a way to run back into the colony he's actually got the hive tilted anyway so he shouldn't have any issues i'm glad to see he did that both boxes completely packed with bees and honey. He's got a little note here, might be too crowded. I don't think that's a concern. I think you're in good shape. Um, weight is a guesstimate, but must be 80 pounds or more. Okay, so let me go over some of the things here I see that I like. I like the fact that he tilted the colony um, forward. What that does is it keeps any moisture at all from running back into the colony. Um, I also like that he is uh, using the mountain camp method. Um, as far as the tar paper, personally, I don't know that I would use tar paper, and here's why. I've lived in Ohio my whole life, and the last three, four, maybe five years, winters have been getting warmer. It's nothing like, say, seven, eight years ago, where it was frigid cold pretty much most of the winter, the ground would stay frozen. Now we're battling mud and uh, cool temperatures, but they're not cold enough to keep the ground frozen during the daytime. So it only takes a little bit of sun to heat up tar paper, okay? So when you take that sun, and in Ohio we don't see the sun every day in the winter time, but let's say we see it two times a week, two different days a week. Um, and on those two days, it rises the temperature from, we'll say in the morning it's 30 degrees. And by midday, that colony has heated up to 50 degrees because of the black tar paper and the sun shining on it. So now your bees have completely broke cluster. They started to move around a little bit and 
with them burning them calories, they need to replace them because they're up moving around. Um, to replace them calories, they have to eat. So, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, do with it uh, w what you want, I would not use tar paper. The tar paper, in my opinion, causes the bees to eat more food quicker than they should. Um, you take that same 30 degree day, um, and don't put tar paper on the colony, the box probably isn't going to heat up enough to make the bees start moving around. So that's just my two cents. Um, I'm not going to hold it against you because you're using tar paper. I think everybody needs to experiment with different methods to figure out what works for them and what doesn't work for them. So I'm going to give you uh, four out of five hive tools on that setup. Good job. Okay, so moving right along. Location, Upper Peninsula of Michigan, near Lake Superior. Average winter temps, 0 to 25 degrees. Have seen minus 30. Estimated food stores, 88 pounds. Okay, for the short description. Double medium 8 frame colony with sugar board. An empty medium filled with shavings, so that would be a quilting box. Lower entrance, screened bottom closed. Colony seems strong with cluster in lower box and upper box full of honey. Once the warm days are done, I'll be placing a windbreak in the front of the hives to keep the strong winds from blowing straight into the hives. And then he's also made a little note here, and I kind of like how he's wrote this up, and this isn't required. Um, the queen and her court have settled into her winter palace. Up on entry, she finds the slatted rack. Moving upward, the queen finds brood, honey, Super that provides room for both winter bee brood and some food storage. Continuing upwards, she will discover eight medium frames filled with honey. The next level is where the sugar board is located, providing 12 pounds of sugar reserves. Also located in the sugar board is a hole allowing access to the, sh to the sugar along with a temperature probe to monitor the hive's temperature. Above this is is located a humidity control area consisting of a medium filled with wood shavings. Her side walls have R20 insulation while the roof is insulated in R30. All settling in for the long winter. Okay, so from what I see here, um, I like the upper quilting box idea. I've not had much luck with them myself, but I know a lot of people that have. So I like the fact that you're, you're thinking about uh, condensation and moisture in the colony. Um, I would like to see, and maybe you have, you just didn't indicate it here, your colony tilted forward so that any moisture cannot wick back or run back into the colony. And I'd also like to see an upper entrance. Um, here's my concern. Bees die naturally over winter. Um, some of your older bees, they're going to start dropping to the bottom. And over a period of time, that can plug off your lower entrance. Dead bees. Just blocking off any porthole to get out. So, that's another reason I like to see the upper entrance. It allows a place for the bees to get in and out. And it also gives a place for the moisture to go out as it goes up. You see heat rises off of the cluster. And that's what's helped push that moisture up. And it's what's going to help it collect in that quilting box, but at the same time, I think if you had a small entrance just right below the quilting box, the moisture might even wick out instead of going into the to the wicking uh, material in your quilting box. So, I think you, you've, uh, you've done a real good job here preparing for winter. Um, I'm going to give you three out of five hive tools. Good job. Okay, so let's do one more here. Um, location, Northwest Ohio. Average winter temps, 15 to the mid-30s. Estimated food stores, 100 plus pounds. Desired food stores, two deeps, one medium, preferably full. So that just tells me that they don't really know. Okay, so now for the description. From the ground upwards, screen bottom, closed in the winter, steel mouse guard, double deep 10 frame, plus one medium for added food stores, queen excluder 
on lower deep after honey harvest to keep queen down and new honey supplies up. We'll remove excluder before snow. Inner cover, 5 inch vented feeder. Spacer with lower 1 inch foam board allows for serp and sugar slug feeder. Outer cover and brick. The brick wrapped with quarter inch rope for easy grab and to keep from scratching galvanized outer cover. I really like the idea of the rope. That's pretty smart. Um, note this will be my first winter and I have added medium on. Had a colony starve last winter was my first year of beekeeping and I'm still learning process. This will be my second winter with the vented feeder box. I am able to visually monitor moisture to keep condensation at bay by adjusting four round bee doors. For my mountain candy I created a round sugar slug with a half inch diameter hole in the center. I used an old whipped cream container and a wooden dowel. The slug sits flat on one inch foam board which has the same hole in the center inner cover. The heat and moisture from the colony has to travel through the sugar slug to escape the hive. Bees seem to like this and will eat the block from the inside out all winter as it is somewhat heated. Once the slug is almost gone I can drop in another no problem. Never have to open the inner cover which is nice. Um, let me go ahead and point out some things here that I see that I like and don't like. Um, first of all, love the rope idea. Um, would like to see a little attempt to put up some kind of a wind block. Um, other than that, it looks like you've done a really good job um, setting your hive up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, rate you here. I'm going to give you three out of five hive tools. Good job, folks. This has been a fun video to create. I've been working on it off and on this last week, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. So I really hope that we get more submissions and more people want to continue this. And then once a month, I'll release one of these videos, and uh, that'll help pass this cold winter. And we'll get to spring, and if the series does good, we'll continue it going with something else. Uh, maybe it's Rate My Honey Frame. Maybe it's Rate My Brew Frame. Maybe it's Rate My Bee Yard. Who knows at this point. To learn how to submit a photo of your hive, go down in the video description and all the information can be found down there. And who knows, in weeks to come, I could be raiding your very colony. So if that's something you're interested in, folks, go down below the video and get your uh, entry submitted to me. I'd be glad to share it in the upcoming weeks. And who knows, I could be rating your very colony here real soon. So if you like this video, folks, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and uh, make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please take a minute to do so. It's real simple. Just go down below the video, click subscribe, and make sure you click on that little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'd also like to invite you down below the video on my merch shelf. Get a JC's Bees beanie. Perfect for this cold winter crap we got. We'll see you next week, folks. Thanks for watching JC's Bees. <laughs>